Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achana. Welcome back to my C++ series. So, today we're going to be talking all about casting in C++. We really haven't talked about this often, although we have in fact used casting. And we'll talk more about kind of C-style casting as well as C++-style casting. And this, this video won't cover absolutely everything. We'll get into this as the series kind of goes on. And I think that this topic is one of those things that you just have to practice with and kind of learn through experience rather than me just telling you this is how it works because if you just take in the theory with no practice for this specific topic it's not really going to help you that much so um, just keep that in mind. Okay cool. So first of all what is casting? Well when I'm talking about casting I'm specifically talking about type casting or any kind of conversions that we have to do within the type system that we have available to us in C++. C++ being a strongly typed language basically just means that there is a type system and types are enforced. If I make something as an integer, I can't suddenly just start treating it as if it was a double or a float or something like that, or vice versa. I have to kind of stick to my type unless there's an easy implicit conversion, which means that there's C++ knows how to convert between the two types with no data loss and basically what's labeled as an implicit conversion as well, or there's an explicit conversion, which is where I'm actually telling C++, hey, you need to convert this type into this type. Now we have covered kind of casting and type conversions to an extent when we talked about type punning. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check that out. But in this video, we're going to kind of formally co cover what casting actually means and see how we can use it. So the way that we perform type conversions, specifically explicit type conversions, is one of two ways really, or at least I see it as one of two ways. There's the kind of C style casts, and then we also have the C++ style casts. Now, if we just take a look at a quick example, let's just say I've got an integer like this. I'll call it a and I'll set it equal to five. And I wanna, I wanna treat it as a double. Now, in this scenario, if I make a double called value and set it equal to a, you can see that, that we don't need to explicitly specify, hey, I want you to convert a into a double because that's, that's, a, that's kind of a conversion that it deems as implicit. It's easy to do, there's no data loss, anything like that. Now, if I had something the other way around, where I had maybe double value equals like 5.3, 5.25 or something like that, and I wanted to convert it into a um, integer, that would also be deemed as an implicit conversion because it's not something that we necessarily have to specify, hey, I'm converting this type into this type. Now, if we did want to be explicit, for example, what we can actually do is just cast this double into uh, into an integer by doing something like this. Right now, of course, in this case, it implicitly is able to do that, but for the sake of this, let's, and, and since we are talking about casting, let's pretend it wasn't. So we have an implicit, we have an explicit conversion here because we're saying, I want this value to be converted into an integer. Now, why we need this is kind of, uh, it's not really, uh, perhaps a better example might be like, if we wanted to maybe have another double here, um, called A, and we wanted to uh, add, you know, 5.3 to this value. Now, uh, if we just kind of get rid of this and print what A actually is, um, then what you might see is obviously what you might expect with kind of adding 5.25 to 5.3. Now, if I cast this value into an integer, then that's going to convert it into an integer, which means it's going to truncate the 0.25 and it'll end up just being 5 plus 5.3, which instead of giving us 10.55, would give us the value 10.3. So in this case, it's actually changing it. And this actual technique that we've used is called a C style cast because we basically specified the type that we're casting to in parentheses like this, and then the variable that we're actually casting. Optionally, we can, of course, uh, surround it in uh, parentheses like this, which is particularly useful if maybe we wanted to cast that entire thing into an int once it had actually evaluated. In fact, if we do this, we'll still get 10 as the value because value is going to be 5.25 plus 5.3, which gives us 10.55, and then it would get truncated into an int. Now, the C++ way of doing this would be by using a C++ style cast. And specifically for this, we would use something called a static cast. Um, and to do that, uh, basically this would look like uh, the following. So let me just get back to where we, where we were before, which is just this. Um, and then this, then this would just be a static cast, what we're casting into, which is an int, and then the value, and then we'd add 5.3. Um, and that would be our value. Now, C++ style casts, we have a number of them. One of them is called static cast. We have something else called reinterpret cast. We have something called dynamic cast, and we have something, something called const cast. Those are kind of the four main casts. 
Now, what you have to realize is that they do not do anything that Sea Star casts cannot do. What I mean by that is that, sure, they might do additional things, but the actual conversion, the result of what you get is a successful type conversion. Sea Style Casts can achieve all of that. So this isn't really adding new functionality. What it is adding is kind of like syntax sugar to your code. Now, of course, Dynamic Casts, which we'll talk about specifically in another video, I'll still show you an example of it working here but we'll talk more in depth about what it actually does and how it works in another video. That, for example, will actually perform a check and may return null if the conversion wasn't successful. So it does do extra things, which also means that it actually kind of slows you down. But for the, for the most part, all of these C++ style casts don't do anything really extra. They just kind of are a way to put into English words, static cast, for example, that it's a static cast. And they also do some other compile time checks in the case of static cast to see if that conversion is actually at all ever possible. And reinterpret cast as well is kind of putting into words the whole type punny thing that we talked about. It's just a way to put it into words like reinterpret cast. I'm reinterpreting this memory as something else. Const cast. I'm removing const. I'm adding const. The benefit to having all of these casts apart from those kind of compile time checks that you might receive is you can now search for them in your code base, right? If I want to see where, I, where my casting is, maybe I'm having performance issues and I want to not dynamic cast something, I can search for dynamic cast. I can search for static cast. If you just have a cast, like a C cell cast, like int or whatever, like we did with that previous example, how are you going to search for that? You can't really search for it. It's not something that you can, of course, you could use like a regex or something like that and actually just, I don't know, just it wouldn't actually be practical to do that. Whereas here we've got actual English words that are very easy to search for. So it just helps us both as a programmer reading our code and writing our code, but also it helps us to reduce kind of errors that we might accidentally make if we try and cast uh, certain things that are in incompatible. A good example is we've got a few classes here, base, derived, and another class. Um, if I just try and cast this value, which is clearly an int, into like, I don't know, another class, that's going to result in an error because, well, okay, in this case, it's going to be because of a constructor. But if I add like a pointer or something like that uh, to this case, you can see it's an invalid type conversion. So what C++ has done is the compiler has looked at that and been like, that's never gonna work, right? And even if we do take the memory address of it, right, which of course gives us an init pointer and we try and type on it, that's not gonna work. It's an invalid type conversion. Now for type punning, as I just explained, we would need to use reinterpret cast. And if we do, you can see we don't get any errors. We've now reinterpreted the, the, the data that is at that value pointer into being a pointer to an, another class instance. Um, but the point is uh, with, with things like this, it adds actual compile time checking because it knows that we can't do certain conversions. Whereas this wouldn't be the case, of course, if we just used a normal C style cast, it would just kind of default to doing what a reinterpret cast would do. And I'm saying a lot of words and it might be a little bit hard to follow, but again, the best way to, to, to actually learn this stuff is just to practice it. Uh, try and build yourself an example of using a static cast, a reinterpret cast, a const cast, a dynamic cast. I'll show you a dynamic ca a cast uh, example in a minute, but just try and do that yourself. Um, and then that's the best way to kind of work out how it actually works and when you can use each one. So if we take a look at dynamic cast, uh, what dynamic class will actually do um, is suppose that we had, maybe we made a derived class instance, right? So I said derived, derived equals new derived. And then somewhere along the line, I decided to actually cast that um, into a base, right? So a base, base equals derived. Now, what I want to do later is figure out, okay, hey, I have a base pointer. Is it actually a derived instance or is it an, another class instance? Because you can see they both extend base. Now, if I try and use it, what I can do with dynamic cast is actually kind of not only ask that question, but attempt that conversion and do something if it fails. So we know for a fact, based on this code, that base is actually an instance of the derived class, but let's pretend that we didn't know that. And we'll just say another class, AC, equals dynamic cast, another class, and then AC, right? And we'll add the pointer in, of course. Okay, now what's going to happen here is if we had just used a static cast, which by the way, we can see we can do. In this case, it does the same thing as a, as a C style cast. 
or if we use a C style cast, it would just work. Like as in, it would just give us that value. And of course things might go wrong later on because you know, AC is not in fact another class. It's actually a derived instance. We've just basically type pumped it. But with dynamic cast, what it's actually going to do is it's going to see if that is actually the case. Um, and of course over here, I need to make sure I pass in uh, base and not AC. Let's hit F5 and see what happens. So you can see once I actually do that, if I hit F10, AC is equal to null because it is in fact not that. And of course you could then check it. You could say if not AC or if AC equals null, then maybe we know that it's not that class. Or a way to check for if it is that class is just to say if AC, that means that the type conversion was successful and we now know that base is in fact an instance, an instance of uh, derived, right? Um, sorry, an instance of another class. Um, and of course, if I do change this around so it works by setting it equal to derived, hit F5, then you can see if I hit F10 here, it, it does in fact give us a valid pointer because that conversion was successful. So a dynamic cast is a great way to see if it's actually worked. Now, this does tie in very closely to the runtime type information, RTTI, and it requires, requires a whole bunch of things which we'll talk about in a specific video about dynamic casting. But just so you know, these casting operators are kind of available to you as a way to simplify casting and to maybe make it more solid in the sense that it will do compile time checking, dynamic cast will do runtime checking, um, and you'll get all, all that kind of hopefully more solid code base by using um, casting operators like that. Me personally, I tend to use C style casts most of the time, but I do encourage if you're working on a brand new project that you're starting from scratch, or if you have a very small project, you should use C style, C, sorry, C++ style casting, like static cast, dynamic cast, reinterpret cast, all of that kind of stuff, because those, those casts do make your code more solid and are better for everyone involved, really. Um, and uh, const cast I didn't really touch on, but that's just literally, you use it to add or remove const to something, easy. Um, you can add const implicitly anyway, but it's mostly for removing const. Um, and again, it's good to just have that in your code base because now you can search for all the naughty times you've decided to remove const and maybe fix that or just come up with something else as well. Um, so that's really useful. And then the other thing was reinterpret cast. If you look at that type punning video that I've linked at the beginning of this video, um, everything I did there, you can basically use reinterpret cast. So that kind of, that's what reinterpret cast is used for. It's when I don't actually want to convert anything. I just want to take that kind of pointer and interpret it as something else. I want to interpret existing memory as another type. That's what reinterpret cast is used for. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. You can help support this series by going to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Huge shout out to everyone who supports this series because it would not be here without you guys. And it certainly wouldn't be, um, wouldn't be an ongoing thing that I could keep keep doing so yeah thank you because i love making videos for you guys um i will see you next time goodbye